friends welcome back to the channel today's video is going to discuss more about things that you should do i really think that this might be like unconventional things that you should do to prepare for your homeschool year and i've been talking a lot about just preparing your home and the atmosphere in your home for your homeschool year and you'll really thank yourself later for that because if you can set the tone in your home of how you want things to flow and then you can practice that before you even start school and you can get yourself on a routine for maintaining and you know making over homemaking prepping meals if you can get yourself on a routine for doing that that will lessen the amount of pressure or stress that you possibly could feel once you are completely engulfed in your homeschool year. So today we're going to talk about having a, a routine, a nighttime routine, but before any routine that you have, it doesn't start, it doesn't begin and end with that specific routine, but it starts earlier than that. So before you can have a nighttime routine, you need to have things set up throughout your day. So you need to have a daytime routine to make your nighttime routine easier. And I will go ahead and say that because of social media, we really have a skewed view of how things are supposed to be. And I shouldn't even say supposed to be, but how things are supposed to be like the actual word post as you would post a picture on social media because a lot of times we see things we see pictures we see curated moments we see highlights you know like good moments in someone's home we see you know the perfect picture of how someone has decorated their home and we compare our lifestyle and our home with that with that picture with that perfectly curated home and we forget that that is not reality for all of us. I'm not even going to say reality in general, but not for all of us. Because some people are in a different season of life and they don't have little kids running around. And they can keep their house perfectly curated for most of the day. And most of the times, those homes are uptight. And those homes, you when you go in them, you sit down and you feel like you can't move. You feel like you can't you know, move a pillow, you feel like you can't you scooch over and really, you know, get into the couch and get comfortable. It's like the, the times when we used to have plastic on our couches. Do you remember those times? Did you have plastic on your couches back in the day when you would sit down on the couch and it would just be the stiffest thing ever, but it was because we needed to protect the furniture because you better not tear up that furniture because that furniture is expensive and ain't nobody got time to be buying new couches with all these kids in this house buying new couches is expensive. And so we personally did not have, uh, we didn't have our couch covered with the plastic, but I know plenty of family members that did. And it was like that, like, don't let them kids tear up your furniture. So Jeremy and I have been together for 10 years now, and we've been married for eight years. We just celebrated our eight year anniversary. And when we first got together and we started to buy a home, we wanted to have a front room eventually. We knew that our first house probably wouldn't have that in the areas that we wanted to, to live in because the houses were, you know, so expensive. But we wanted to have, or I should say I wanted to have because he just wanted a home for his family. <laughs> and I was dreaming of all the stuff. Like we have to have a sitting room. We have to have a dining room. We need to have like a, a den to, you know, to be able to entertain we need to have the front room where where you come in you know nobody can go in that room because that's what I was used to you have a space that nobody can go in and then he was like Lisa what is the point of having the space if nobody can go in it what is the point of having a couch that nobody can sit on why would you do that why would you spend money to have a couch where you can't couch on, like you, you can't go and be like, that's the point. The point isn't to have like these beautiful pieces that are untouchable and you can't use. We need to use all the space that we have available to us. And then it really changed my mindset. It changed my mindset of using 
living and loving every piece of our home. And so as I've been going through this process more specifically of preparing our home for the new homeschool year, keeping in mind the things that worked for us throughout the year and the things that stressed me out, the rooms that were overcrowded and they stressed me completely out because I couldn't keep up with them because nothing had a home. I thought about, and you guys may remember this in one of my cleaning videos that I just did, I thought about the room, our den, that we have that is maintained. And I wanted to duplicate that room. I wanted to have that space be in other spaces so that throughout my day, I didn't have these enormous piles of mess everywhere And I was constantly running through my house trying to maintain and trying to keep up. I wanted each space to have a kind of like a, a responsibility to our family. Like this space here is responsible for delivering this for our family. The playroom, which is our front room, because we have we technically got that sitting room and that dining room and that den, but we utilize those spaces way different than I ever thought we would. So the front room, the kids playroom, that's their playroom. That is the room that's going to take me the most to maintain. And I wouldn't even say me. It takes the kids the most to maintain. I go in there and I do my mommy duties, but I know that their toys should be there. And occasionally they will trinkle out of there, but that's okay because it won't be an entire mess that's trinkling out and going and spilling over into other rooms. The majority of their toys are in that room. They do have some in their room, but again, those are their responsibilities. Now, again, I'll go in and I'll do my mommy touch, but I gave them space to care for their space and so we go often through their toys and things to see if there's anything that they want to get rid of so that we can declutter our space our minds our hearts and our time so that we can give ourselves more time to enjoy the things that we have and so that space um, has their homeschool things in there and I removed it from my dining room so that I can calm my dining room down. And it was a space that I didn't have to go in every day and like go to work cleaning. There's just a few things that you saw, there were a few colored pencils and you know, a few things that I had to pick up, but that took no time at all. And their playroom had toys all over it, but guess what? They can pick up those toys. So in going through this process, bringing it back to having routines, Declutter your spaces before you implement the routines. Calm your spaces before you go ahead and create a routine. Because, again, you want to move as efficiently as possible. The less stuff you have to move around and shift around, the more time you're going to get throughout your day to do the things that you love. Now, my kitchen, okay, I have decluttered my kitchen so many times and I still, there are still things that I miss when I put them away off of my counters. I have taken my, um, my KitchenAid mixer off my counter so many times, but that thing is heavy and I get tired of picking it up and putting it down and picking it up and putting it down for the purposes of people walking in our home and not seeing the clutter. And then I started to thinking, girl, you are working against yourself. You need that mixer for all types of things that you want to make and prepare for your family. Because yes, I love fast meals, but I also love slow meals. And I also love slow living. And I also love having things readily available for me where I don't have to dig and look for them. It may look like I have a lot of cabinets, but with all the utensils and the tools and things that we have that I actually use, I don't really have that much space, as much space as I would love to have. And so these counters got to get used. My kids love to make sandwiches and they can make them on their own. So I can't hide my bread. It needs to be visible so that they can invite themselves to make themselves some lunch if necessary. And so I am deciding to not work against myself. 
my KitchenAid mixer is going to be there. All my utensils are going to be there. My knife set, all of that, my cutting board, it's going to be there. This is what works for me. And so I'm going to go into my new homeschool year with that mindset of having the spaces that I can have with the least amount of stuff, I'm going to have those spaces. I'm going to enjoy those spaces. Those spaces are going to be cozy, welcoming, and inviting. But when I need to have my stuff, I'm going to have my stuff. It's going to be contained. It's going to all have a home. And it's still going to be beautiful to me. And so one thing that I did was I got a vase and I put all of my cooking utensils in there right next to my stove. And I got all things that I love. The wicker basket that, um, it's not even wicker, but the basket that has my, it is wicker. (laughs) The basket that has my bread in there, that basket is beautiful to me. And so while my bread has to be on the counter, it's not just sitting there, it's in a beautiful basket. It has its boundaries. The bread cannot go outside of this container. The utensils cannot go outside of the utensil holder. The little salt and pepper containers, this is all I have room for. The mixer has a spot. It needs to be there. So guess what? Throughout the day, when I'm straightening up and putting things back and my family is helping out, They know where everything goes because they can see it. They can see where everything goes. If you need to go through your cabinets and declutter some things so that things can be can fit perfectly in your cabinet for this up and coming year so that you don't have a day when your kids are working on that last nerve that every mother has. And you open a cabinet and something falls out on you and now you are mad. Eliminate that. Declutter if you can. Get rid of what you can. Set boundaries in your home for the things that you have. My cups have one cabinet. And whatever I can't fit in that cabinet, it gotta go. It's gotta go. Decide how many cabinets you want for your cups, your plates, your spices, your things. And then... Once you have all of that decided, create a nighttime routine for getting your home back into the shape that you want it to be. Not the shape that social media says it should be. Back into the condition that you desire. The best condition for you and your home. You as the homemaker and the manager of your home. How much stuff do you want to manage? Not how much stuff do I want to manage because I'm managing my home. But how much stuff do you want to manage in your home? What's comfortable? What's going to allow you to still prepare those meals for those babies? Homeschool those babies. Love on your family and your husband. What is the amount of stuff that's going to allow you to do that? And where is that stuff going to go? How can you set it up to where it's, easy breezy for you to go through and wipe up and get your house back to tip top shape that's it that is it once you do that cleaning will be a breeze because throughout the day everything has a home and you can have your spaces that you know will take you five to ten minutes to get back together. So my challenge for you is to pick two spaces in your home, whatever two spaces that is for you, whatever two spaces that you can commit to. And for the next 21 days, as we're developing this habit, I want you to declutter that space, those spaces, those two spaces, calm those two spaces so that you can feel like you have control in your home. Whichever two spaces that looks like for you. For me, my living room, And my dining room are the easiest to maintain. I learned that last year when I calmed my living room space down and I eliminated a lot of stuff in there. And so remember I told you guys that I wanted to recreate the atmosphere in my living room in other spaces. So I recreated that in my dining room. 
And so I'm going to choose my dining room and my kitchen because I know that that's a harder space. And so in my kitchen, I'm going to make sure that I am on top of it for the next 21 days, my dining room, my kitchen. And because I already have my living room, I know that that space is going to be easy to maintain. Those are my main living areas. And so at the end of the night, I need to make sure that I'm closing down those spaces so that in the morning I can wake them up. I can wake up my home and I can feel good doing it. So much for being here thank you for your comments and your responses to this type and style of video it has been so much fun I am truly enjoying it but until next time friends I hope you take care and have a beautiful day <music>